is complicated offseason with new pieces, including a new quarterback. Eventually, it started to click. Bruce Arians on the radio today about that turning point. What if he had told you in your second year, coach, and we're going to have Tom Brady at quarterback, and you're going to be playing the Super Bowl at home at Raymond James Stadium? Uh, what are you smoking or drinking to give me some? <laughs> When do you think that offense, in your mind, really started clicking and you were like, we have really got something here? Well, I think it really started the second half of the Kansas City game. Then going into the open day, we solidified a lot of things that we were doing self-scout-wise and run, running the ball-wise, play-action, the whole, the whole thing. And I thought we played outstanding the rest of the way. So you just heard Arians reference that. As the Buccaneers were heading into their bye week following a Week 12 loss to the Chiefs, Dan was saying they should look at themselves and see what's not working and then also what is working, right? Well, whatever they did, it, it did end up working. Brady has passed for the league's most yards and touchdowns since week 14, while the team has also posted the league's lowest turnover rate in that span. So, Dan, you've been tough on the Bucks and their coaching and their offense throughout a lot of the season, right? But you've had a little change of heart, so tell us about it. Well, I, th I think, first of all, we've got to give them credit for making those adjustments. You know, I've said multiple times that they decided to watch NFL Live and figure out what oh they boy. were doing well on offense and what they <laughs> needed to fix. First of all, they figured out giving Tom Brady ownership of the line of scrimmage. That's what Tom's been notorious for is getting to the line of scrimmage, gathering information, what's the, what's the blitz that's coming, giving the offensive line who's coming, and then finding the matchup. And then the second thing is they realized that they got to play inside out rather than outside in. They were so in love with the talent on the outside that it was Chuck and Duck all over the place and they couldn't protect and what they did was realizing okay if we keep Brady protected they're gonna be great and those guys will win on the outside that's why we've heard BA reference all that play action pass but watching them last week it brought me back in time you know when they needed a big play it's always been Tom Brady finding Rob Gronkowski years ago against the Chiefs it was the slants against the Rams in the Super Bowl but this time it's it's the screen pass it's the second most important play of the game you see Scotty Miller on that orbit motion and then return and then they got the inside zone fix so watch everybody on the defense like their vision is completely to the left side of your screen right side of the football field they've got Chris Godwin that's gonna lift off all that coverage and a three count screen for Rob Gronkowski all he has to do is be patient what that does is it leaves one defender to that side of the field huge moment second 11 screen press to Rob Gronkowski becomes a 34 yard chunk catch and run for that offense gets him in the field goal range and really makes it that eight point victory or that eight point lead and we again we we become so accustomed to Tom Brady to Rob Gronkowski in crucial moments and it ended up in that same situation it just looked differently to all of us instead of going down the field the screen pass so credit BA and that offensive staff Byron Leftwich and that's the point Ruddy like if Brian Dable or Matt LaFleur or Andy Reid called that screen it would have been a huge conversation hmm. on Monday so I want to give Brian Bruce Arians and Byron Leftwich their flowers today great game planning and great understanding of what they were going to do well no doubt, Dan. And, and also to, to add to that, speaking from the offensive standpoint, like the implementation of not only the run game that you heard Bruce Arians mention, yeah. but also the check down game, the get the ball out of Tom Brady hands quick game. Sure. Like as a former defensive player that's played against him, that is the part that gives you headaches. The fact that he's releasing the ball when you're winning rushes, it mm. should be pressures or sacks or at least to have the opportunity to get him on the ground. Earlier this year, we saw Tom Brady sacked a lot, pressured a lot because of all of the down the field, big plays that they wanted to hit throughout the game. You take possession after possession when this team has had success and now they're winning. It's been a lot of dink and dunk. It's been taking our shots at, at the opportunistic times. It's been running the football to make linebackers respected and come up. And now you're starting to see. And that's why I said Dan, Dan talked about this last game against Green Bay being what yeah. you recognize as a Tom Brady influence. I thought it was I, I recognized it against the Saints because I yeah. think they went into that game saying Tom Brady has thrown five interceptions in the first two meetings against this team. Obviously, we need to do something different. And what was different was more of what Tom Brady has done yes. for the majority of his career at the quarterback spot. So I give Tampa credit for that. Like Dan is saying, more of a Tom Brady influence, more of what he's comfortable with doing. And that's what every team with, with a quarterback should be trying to do anyway.
All right, Key, so now the Buccaneers get a B back. So even more weapons, right, for Tom Brady, which should be scary for some people out there, you'd think. But does this Buccaneers offense scare you? It, 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 it does not scare me, and I don't think it scares the Kansas City Chiefs at all. This is playoff football, though, right? Marcus mentioned it. You run the football with Leonard Fournette. Tom Brady becomes somewhat of a super manager because this really is about the defense. You think about what that defense did against Green Bay. You turn that football over three times, and yet and still they walk away with six points because of the defense. Tom Brady's there to manage the game and do it well, and he's been able to do that. There's nothing wrong with that at this stage of his career. Everything that he's brought to the table to this football team, changing the landscape, not throwing 30 interceptions, all that is extremely important. But so is JPP. So is Devin White. So is the other guys on that defense. When you think about Davis, Whitfield, and some Dean, those guys come to the party. So it changes the landscape. It gives you a short field. That is how you win football games. That is how we won the Super Bowl. We ran the football, come playoff time, we dominated up front on the defensive side of the ball, and our quarterback, Brad Johnson, was very efficient and made plays. That is how the Buccaneers will win the Super Bowl. Hey, Dan, really fast, did Keyshawn just call Tom Brady a game manager? Yeah, I called, I him, mean, a you super, I called him a super manager because yeah. that's the style <laughs> in which they play. <laughs> you saw my eyes just bulge out of my I head. Listen, during the I, I Super know, Dan, Bowl, Dan, okay? Dan, I know you scared to say that because we praise Tom Brady to a whole nother level. But it, we praise him to a whole nother level. But you got to understand that defense. He gave the ball away three times against Green Bay. That yes. defense gave him six points, big guy. Six yeah, points. Keith, during the Super Bowl, we all know that their defense is fantastic. No one's thrown any form of shade on their defense. But to sit here and say that he's a, a super manager, he threw for 40 touchdowns. Super, a super, and here's the a thing, super, Kate. That's good, though. No, that's it's not. Good. Here's, 